Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the site event of the UN Statistical Commissions on the new developments in business and trade statistics. My name is Marki Moriawan, so I am from UN Statistics uh, Divisions. I'm responsible of international uh, trade statistics. Uh, so our agenda is uh, quite straightforward. We have an opening remark by Stefano Menghinello uh, uh, from uh, ISTAT. Uh, he is a chair of the UN Committee of Experts on Business and Trade Statistics. Uh, uh, Stefano, you are welcome to deliver your opening remarks. Okay, thank you, Mar uh, Mark, uh, uh, very much, and uh, a very warm, a very warm welcome uh, to uh, to everyone. This is a very uh, important moment for us because we have the opportunity to to share with you some knowledge uh, uh, on on uh, uh, business statistics. Uh, in particular, we focus on on the on the inbuilt on integrating business and trade statistics, and also on multinational enterprise information pl uh, platform. Those are, are two key projects that are carried out by our committee in cooperation with the many country and with other uh, international uh, organization. So uh, we believe that really uh, uh, official statistics is not only made by collecting the data, but also by the knowledge that you can put inside the data. And what we are trying to do with, with our committee is to share international best practice and to create a strong uh, community uh, of business statistician and trade statistician also based on knowledge and cooperation. I think this is quite short for, for an opening, so now I can uh, give the word back to Marky. Uh, thank you, Stefano. Uh, <clears throat> so let, let's just go directly uh, to uh, Christina and Geraldo. So Christina, uh, she is the colleague of the UN uh, task team on international trade statistics. And Geraldo is the deputy director of uh, uh, deputy director general of uh, of economic administrative records of uh, INEGI uh, Mexico. So they're going to deliver uh, the introductions or the progress update on the handbook on integrating business and trade statistics. So go ahead, Cristina and Geraldo. Gerardo is going to start the presentation. Good morning, good afternoon to all of you. It's a, really a pleasure to be here today. So I first give the floor to Gerardo to start the presentation on the handbook. Please. Thank you very much, uh, Stefano, Marki, Cristina. Hello, everyone. I think that you can see now my screen. Is that right? In. OK, sorry, just to be sure. It's OK. It's yes, perfect. now we, we can see the outline. Exactly. Thank you very much, Marty, for confirming. Yes, the, the, in fact, this is the opportunity to share with you the handbook on integrating business and trade statistics. As Marky pointed out, this is a joint effort in the uh, work as chief editors. I'm proud really to share this responsibility with my colleague, Cristina Neves from Statistics Portugal. Uh, I'm Gerardo Duran from uh, INEGI, Mexico. So. The intention now is to share with you the uh, basically the objectives of, the, of this handbook. What, are, what is the rationale behind this, this handbook on integrating business and trade statistics, the process of the organization? The outline is a relevant point that we would like to share because it's in fact the content of our handbook, the experiences that we are now including as country practices in this, in this handbook, uh, the timeline that we have uh, in front of us, particularly for the current year, the outstanding issues that we are discussing now for the elaboration of this of this handbook. And finally, we are including now this uh, handbook as part of the second global consultation that is part of the work of the uh, trade test team. So uh, I will start uh, talking about this uh, idea of the handbook. Uh, last year in 23, the Statistical Commission of the United Nations uh, endorsed the development of this, of this handbook. And uh, the idea is provide a comprehensive guide uh, with a conceptual and methodological basis about how to connect the firm specific business data with international trade data or other domain statistics in an international com comparable uh, manner. So uh, following this uh, recommendation, uh, we started last year under the 
the responsibility of the task team on international trade statistics. And this is a, a task team that is part of the committee of experts on business and trade statistics. So finally, this is a collaboration of the two sides of this uh, committee in the side of business and in the side of trade. Finally, uh, the, the handbook uh, was born in the side of uh, the trade. However, we are in touch with the experts in the side of business. The idea is that, that the handbook compiles a wealth of national practices regarding techniques, legal infrastructure, and particularly these practices are the good example for showing to the, to the world what about the state of the art in linking business and, and trade. So uh, we, ha we have now the plan to share with you the process. Uh, the final lead has been an interesting uh, process, especially because the cooperation in the, in the context of this uh, committee of experts on business and trade. So uh, the objectives, rapidly, I would like to share with you that this uh, handbook is really an ambitious uh, project because we are in the idea to provide conceptual and methodological framework related to the integration of business and trade statistics, we are also including technical guidance for building and strengthening capacities in the microdata linking process. Also, we are sharing country experiences related to linking business and trade. And finally, uh, uh, guiding countries to produce linking business and trade uh, uh, statistics, uh, talking about the case of trade in goods and trading services with the aim to provide internationally comparable manner for the uh, uh, countries. The rationale uh, behind HIPS in the left side of this uh, uh, slide, you can see the aspects that we are covering. And in the, in the uh, right side, you can see the chapters with this uh, intention that is part of the, uh, of the handbook. Uh, for example, the conceptual bi basis uh, is uh, uh, in the chapter two. In the chapter two, we will talk about data sources, conceptual framework, and potentials for that and linking. The methodological aspects that I pointed out in the chapter three, we will talk about the microdata linking method. So the MDL, the microdata linking, is definitely the basis for doing this, uh, uh, for doing possible this uh, linkage between business and trade. The use of conceptual and methodological framework for the linking process, we are dedicating two chapters. We are talking about these twin chapters. Let me refer as twin because in the chapter four, we will talk about the linking business and trading goods uh, statistics. And the chapter five is dedicated to linking business and trade in services statistics. So for that reason, we are talking about these twin chapters that are the core of our, our, our handbook. The recommendations and statistical principles are in the chapter six and seven, in the six quality uh, and uh, comparability. Uh, definitely is an important uh, aspect that we would like also to tackle in the, in the handbook. And the chapter seven is dedicated to the dissemination. And finally, we have emerging topics. Uh, so in the chapter eight, we are now including innovation on linking business and trade statistics. We consider that this a miscellaneous chapter with several aspects that we are discussing for the elaboration of this, of this uh, handbook. Well, the organization process, we have some roles uh, as part of this group in charge of the, of the handbook. Uh, Christina Neps and myself, we are now the chief editors, but we have uh, the, several roles in the uh, participation of the countries and my colleagues from statistical offices, central banks, experts in the side of business and trade are participating as contributors. They are responsible for drafting the assigned chapter sections of the document. The reviewers are uh, responsible for revising the integrated document and providing feedback and orientation after each editing round. And the chief editors are uh, responsible for integrating, organizing the activities. And of course, we are also with the responsibility to provide insights, inputs, and feedback uh, to the reviewers and contributors, especially in coordination with the UNSD as a secretariat and providing the UNSD the administrative and technical support for doing possible this, this handbook. So the organization process, I really like this slide that is an overview of the activities. As I pointed out, we started in 23 uh, with the first two editing rounds. I would like to announce that the editing rounds are really an iterative process. This iterative process now is in the continuation in 24. We are now, in fact, in the third editing round. 
and we are expecting two editing rounds more as part of this iterative process. As you can see, between uh, the editing rounds, we have special revisions as part of the activities that we have uh, and as part of the roles of the participants that I pointed out in the previous slide. So uh, if you combine, for example, this responsibility of the revision with the focus group meetings and specific meetings to discuss topics that are necessary to clarify, to uh, go deepen, to uh, explain, explain clearly in the content of the handbook, we are now getting an interesting result, especially now in an integrated manner. In fact, the third editing round is the opportunity to have now an integrated version, a whole version of this, of this handbook. Well, the outline in detail, in the right side, you can see, for example, the specific sections that we are covering, in fact, with the number of pages. For us, it's important this because it's finally our guide to be clear, especially with the contributors and reviewers. Uh, in the current status that we have, I would like to announce that these eight chapters that are part of the, uh, of the handbook, now uh, we have now 22 draft sections that are part of the specific content of the handbook. And in the number of pages, as you can see, we have uh, several, several pages dedicated uh, in the core of the, of the handbook, as I uh, mentioned previously, the chapter four and five. And in this uh, opportunity is 57 pages to uh, include the, the practices, the explanation about the conceptual methodological aspects that are the core of the of the handbook dedicated to linking business and trade. And at the moment we have, we are really proud because we have now 21 country practices included in the, in the handbook. So just to go rapidly for finishing this part and pass the word to my colleague, Christina Neves, I would like to mention that we have several, several practices now from the five continents of the world. As you can see, for example, from Singapore, from Costa Rica, Portugal, OECD also, uh, the, the, we have uh, active participation of the international organizations, Netherlands, ECLAC, that is CEPAL in Spanish, of course, my country, Mexico, Germany, Denmark, Cameroon. And in the case of the chapter eight, that this the opportunity to uh, give a, a, a panorama about innovations. We have, for example, an interesting uh, ded dedicated section about gender in business and trade statistics, that this responsibility of our colleagues of the UNCTAD and the US, and also with experience uh, as, as Portugal is now uh, showing in this slide. So I stop here to pass the word to my colleague, Cristina Neves. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much, Gerardo. Well, in order to, to have these country experiences, we decided that it will be useful to have a template in order to harmonize all the contributors that we are uh, receiving from several countries. And uh, we consider that uh, having a template is also a manner to guide countries in sharing their, their practices. And it was elaborated uh, a template to establish a uniform format, making it easier to incorporate the information into the handbook. Um, Additional, this document can also contribute to the creation of a repository of practices, supplementing those already included in the handbook. So it is really good to have an harmonized template to collect all these country experiences that we, we expect to have and to include in the, in the handbook. The, the specific template is integrated with a section of directions, title, introduction, the content with the core description of the country practices and some closing remarks. Each section includes a brief dis description of the length and characteristics that must be included in this country experience. And it also includes a section with a hang that countries can provide any hyperlinks and additional documentation related to the practice. Uh, please head up to go to the next slide, because in the next slide we have uh, the the template and you can see that uh, all these uh, areas are integrated in this template. We expect to receive a maximum of three pages, including the title, the introduction, the content, the closing remarks, and also the hyperlinks and additional documents. Because we expect to have a small uh, country practice, but uh, all the documents related can be there as an, ex an annex or an hyperlink. So um, someone that wants to go deeper in this country 
practice can do that because the information will be available in this uh, specific uh, handbook. Um, please go to, to the next slide. The next slide is about the timeline for 2024 because, uh, as uh, Gerardo mentioned, we are now in what we call the third editing round. And um, after the previous rounds, the first and the second round of drafting and reviewing, we have now uh, a complete version of the handbook, which was presented last December in the meeting of the task team on international trade statistics. At this moment, this complete version of the the handbook is available for comments and feedback from all the members of the task team on international trade statistics, and we expect to receive the, the comments by the end of this of this week. Um, after that, we plan to have what we call the second task team on international trade statistics global consultation. It's a global consultation that is more related with the contents of the trade manuals that are under revision and which are responsibility of this task team on international trade statistics. But at the same time, we expect to include in this second global consultation specific issues related with this handbook on integrating business and trade statistics mainly to uh, ask countries to share with us their practices and their experiences in linking uh, business and trade statistics. That's why having this specific template with will be very good because the template will be also available in the global consultation. So the countries that uh, uh, may want to share with us their country experiences on linking business and trade statistics can already use this template to do that. Um, and at this point, and uh, still under this uh, third editing round, we are organizing specific meetings with the contributors and the reviewers of the chapters six, seven, and eight of this handbook because there are still some issues that we need to discuss with them. And we also plan to have a meeting on confidentiality issues because this is a cross-cutting issue and we plan to discuss it with the chief editors of the International Merchandise Trade Statistics Manual because um, we need to harmonize the issues related with the confidentiality in both the handbook and the, the general manual on the merchandise trade statistics. Um, we also expect to, as uh, Gerardo mentioned, this is uh, work that it was started in the task team on international trade statistics, but is very much related with business statistics. That's why we also have the support of the task team on the statistical business business register members uh, to help us on analyzing the 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 the, the 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 content of the of the handbook. So we expect also to uh, ask and help our colleagues from the task team on the statistical business register to uh, send us uh, their inputs on the business side relating the the, the contents of the the hand. And based on the comments that we expect to receive from the global consultation and also from the task team on the statistical business register, we will update the, the version of the, of the handbook and uh, we circulated it for the, uh, by, by the members of the, the group that is uh, responsible for drafting the, the handbook. So in late April this year, we expect to start this, the fourth editing round and we expect to share the documents with the members of the task team on international trade statistics based on the contents from the global consultation and from the inputs from the statistical business register task. After that, we expect to have a, a final review by all the task team and in, uh, send the document to the UN Committee of Experts on Business and Trade Statistics Bureau for endorsement um, because we still want to make a global consultation on the handbook, on the handbook on integrating business and trade statistics. So um, all the countries will have the chance to look at the, the contents of the handbook and share their their inputs and their comments on the contents of the of the handbook. Next slide, please. So this is what we expect to do during 2024. 
but um, at this moment we are uh, since we are on the third editing round we still have some issues that uh, we need to further develop uh, regarding the contents of the handbook and as outputs of the focus group meetings that Gerardo mentioned and other specific meetings that we had already on the contents of the handbook there are new matters uh, that need to be addressed in the in the handbook the first one is integrating gender in business and trade statistics and the interagency expert group on gender statistics is working with us in the preparation on, on the specific contents of the handbook related with the gender uh, statistics and they provide us some suggestions and valuable comments to enrich the specific section on gender that we have in the in the handbook we also have the issue of confidentiality as i mentioned is a cross-cutting issue and this is a, a broader element and its discussion could be behind the dissemination so this is something that we are also tackling um, on the contents of the of the hand and since the handbook follows an enterprise centered approach it is not envisaged to consider trade done by households so this was um, an issue that was uh, the table and in the discussion when we are uh, preparing the first drafting of the handbook now it's more clear for us what are the contents of the goals so this is something that we need also to adjust in the content of the of the handbook regarding the data linkage methods it is expected to provide brief descriptions on the methods for linking data such as probabilistic approach for aggregated data additionally to deterministic and this was also a comment that was raised by some countries in the first global consultation that we made in 2023 next slide please Gerardo. Uh, also the topic on the consistency because uh, we consider that it is important to keep the consistency in the concepts and definitions with other international recommendations as well as with products and activity classifications because uh, uh, we don't want to invent the wheel there are a lot of documents already regarding this topic so we want to to be consistent with other documents and uh, manuals that already exist regarding the linking uh, of, of statistics uh, the microdata linking. Uh, the unique identifiers, because in fact uh, the, the relevance of the unique identifiers for linking business and trade data and provide guidance for countries without unique identifiers, because we know that uh, the reality is different among the, the countries all over the world. So there are some countries that are more advanced in linking business and trade statistics because they have unique identifiers and they have a mature enough statistical business register. But we also know that there are many countries that don't have unique identifiers that don't have um, yet a statistical business register in place. But even though we want to include in the handbook some hints, because uh, also these countries can make um, linking business and trade statistics, even though they don't have uh, these unique identifiers and the maturity enough statistical business register. So the, um, the handbook wants to be inclusive and we want to take uh, everybody on board. So it will be very very important to include these country experiences in the handbook, country experiences related with countries that already have unique identifi identifiers, but also country experiences related with countries that don't have unique identifiers, that don't have a statistical business register, but even though they are doing and producing some linking business and trade statistics at, um, at this point. And regarding the statistical business register, it is envisaged to include guidance for countries without a statistical business register in place or with a statistical business register still in an early stage uh, so that they can perform linking business and trade statistics. Next slide, please, Gerardo. Well, uh, I mentioned already that we plan to, to launch a second global consultation on the trade manuals and there will be a sex, section dedicated to the handbook and the, in this second global consultation, which is conducted under the umbrella of the task team on international trade statistics with the aim to get feedback from countries on topics related to the revision of the IMTS and the MCITS, the trade manuals. We also plan to include a specific section uh, on the handbook. 
um, affection to get country practices and experiences in the integration of business and trade statistics uh, through an assessment of the availability of elements, such as, as I mentioned before, the availability of the statistical business register or the availability of unique identifiers that are useful for integrating both domains. Uh, this global consultation will take place during February and March this year. And next slide, please. And there will be some specific questions regarding the existence and the usability of the statistical business register. If the statistical business register is used for linking trade data to generate statistical product, products, if the countries have unique identifiers for microdata linking, um, and we want to ask countries to provide us their experience and practices on integrating business and trade statistics. The main purpose is to enrich the handbook on integrating business and trade statistics with as much as possible country practices and examples using the template that we show it um, in the previous slide. Because by doing this, we expect to have an online repository of practices. So uh, we want to get as much as possible country experiences. And I, as I mentioned before, for those countries that already have a statistical business registered, but also for those that don't have a statistical business registered and that don't have unique identifiers, but even though they, they are doing some microdata linking, then they are generating statistical products based on microdata linking. Next slide, please. So our next steps, the, um, we expect that during the, the specific meetings with the contributors and the reviewers, the, the specific meetings um, that we expect to, uh, to, to have uh, still this, this month of February regarding, as I mentioned before, chapter six, seven and eight on the, on the handbook, we expect to um, address some of the outstanding issues that I mentioned in the previous slide, um, to uh, convert them in new uh, inputs for, for the handbook and try to be aligned with the more uh, the goals that we have in front of us regarding the, the handbook. Um, we also expect to receive uh, important comments and suggestions from the second global consultation, and it will be very useful to identify additional experiences and envisaging an online repository of practices. So our expectation on this second global consultation is very high because we expect to improve the contents of the handbook based on the inputs that we are going to receive from the second global consultation. Um, we also want to um, uh, have more inputs from the, the business side because, as I mentioned before, this project was born inside the, the, the task team on the international trade statistics. So um, our intention to bring to, to the floor uh, some colleagues from the business side and especially from the task team on the statistical business business register will be very relevant. And I think that having this complete version of the handbook, as we have at this point, will be very good uh, to, to share with our colleagues from the business side and to have their inputs, because this is all about linking business and, and trade statistics. And um, during the second quarter of 2024, the, the team responsible for the preparation of the handbook will integrate the document and seek the endorsement of the United Nations Committee of Experts on Business and Trade Statistics, taking into account the inputs from the second global consultation and also the inputs from the business uh, statistics side. Um, because as I previously mentioned, we uh, plan to uh, launch a specific and a dedicated global consultation on the uh, uh, contents of the handbook so um, everyone and uh, everyone involved in these uh, specific uh, statistical areas will have the chance to to read the handbook and to provide comments and suggestions and uh, still additional country practices because since we plan to have this uh, repository online repos repos uh, repository of country practices it will be very good to have uh, more and more uh, examples uh, from uh, several countries to include it in the in the handbook 
So I think this is all from our side. I think it's the, a nice overview about what we are and what we plan to do regarding the preparation of the handbook. So thank you so much, uh, all of you, for being with us today. And thank you so much for the opportunity of sharing the, the work done on the handbook on integrating business and trade statistics. Thank you. Thank you, Cristina Geraldo, for the uh, brief but com comprehensive uh, presentations. Um, so as a reminder to everyone, please uh, ask your questions through the chat or through the uh, Q&A. But now let's start with the presentation uh, uh, from Graham Pilgrim, who is the head of real-time data analytics at OECD. So he will uh, <clears throat> make a presentation on the uh, second release of the multinational enterprise information platform. Go ahead, Graham. Thank you so much, Mark. Um, I think sort of first off, I should sort of start with basically saying this is a huge effort, not just from the OECD side, but from uh, the UNSD. So it really wouldn't be possible without all of the efforts of uh, sort of those on the UNSD side. So that's Julian, Shirley, Ada, Pedro, Jerry and Hugh. And then also on the OECD side is myself, uh, COVID Onga and Erefe. So as hopefully you'll see, there's a lot of it, of work that goes on behind the scenes to kind of bring all of this information on multinationals together. So maybe if we could first start with kind of setting the scene. So when we started this project, um, I kind of often used Apple as a case study um, and a starting point as to how we could go, go forward. Um, and essentially, this is one of the largest companies in the world. So it's got a revenue of 383 billion US dollars, net income of almost 100 billion US dollars, and employing over 150,000 individuals. Um, yet in its annual reporting, we get information on just 19 affiliates, and that's based in 12 jurisdictions. And then it always this gets even worse. So when it does report information about its geographic exposure, um, it uses some inconsistent definitions uh, on some of its uh, on some of its exposure. So, for example, there is a European section uh, in Apple's annual reporting, which basically consists of European countries as well as India, the Middle East, and Africa. Now, if you understand Apple and the corporate structure with Ireland, this complete makes sense but for the kind of the casual reader in some ways it's very easy and quite simple to get into into situations where you have have issues um so it's quite clear we need a little bit more information um there are private data sources but these are hugely expensive um and often this is beyond the reach of the nso's researchers and then even when you do get access to the data there's a lack of transparency. So we don't actually know where the data is actually sourced from a lot of the time. Is it stale? How is it updated and things like this? So the solution in some ways was for OECD and UNSD to come together <laughs> and to put our thinking hats on as to how we could try and solve this, this problem. So what we're doing is we're bringing together a really big mosaic of essentially public publicly available information using all of these alternative data sets that are now available through initiatives that countries are engaging in through making data publicly available, um, but then also information from things such as web scraping, uh, um, corporate databases, which are available in the public domain. Um, and then essentially we bring all of this information together, we create a profile, and we make this freely available to NSOs, researchers, and the general public alike. And the idea being that this is essentially a public information good. Um, our, our aim is to obviously understand um, distant global statistics. So I know from an OECD side, um, our team used to host uh, what we called bilateral traders symmetry meetings um, and the two countries sitting in a room discussing why one person's import figure was different from one person's export figure and a lot of the time it's due to a multinational and their structure um, but you could never be fully disclosive so you would end up with silly statements such as um, a large multinational online retailer 
as your description of your company. So the thing is, is having this publicly available information gives us a common basis where we know it's all been developed from open source uh, information and nobody needs to worry about violating confidentiality restrictions. So how do we achieve this? So essentially, I'm not a big fan of this word, but it is a big data lake, essentially. So we bring together traditional data sources from annual reporting and alternative data sources. So things like metadata from uh, web pages. Uh, so for anyone that's uh, kind of used to these sort of things, um, within web pages, there's something called JSON LD the same as tags and these are really useful because essentially they draw knowledge information boxes that you see on Google when you search for a company so it does nice things like link your company name to social media profile but for us it's exceptionally useful because then that allows us to gain this information and then add it into our into our profiles um, we can also then go one step further than that so, for example, another big data source that we have is it used to be the thing that controls the padlock on your um, internet browser. Uh, Google have changed the symbol now, um, but uh, essentially what it does is it means uh, it tries to identify who you're communicating with and the, the fact that your communications are secure. And then the great thing with this is that what that essentially does is it links a company name to a business ID. And then that gives us a kind of an information point. So what we've then done is we've taken this big kind of wealth of data and we've expanded the concept of the firm. Now, if we were just to use business to business linkings, we wouldn't get that far. Um, but what we've done is we've considered the concept of things such as website, social media profiles, geographic locations, and even applications which the uh, company runs and makes available on things such as Google Play Store or, or the Apple App Store. Um, and what this means is essentially we need to bring it into a big graph database to be able to query this. We need to do a lot of record matching, so things such as uh, fuzzy text matching to try and determine when when um, text uh, declarations are essentially the same, and then provide a platform to query this. Now, because it's all developed from huge amounts of open source data, um, we need to be aware of quality. So our first port of call is always to take manual data capture from annual reporting. Now, this is often from PDF documents, and for anyone that's ever sat in front of a PDF document and tried to extract information out of it, um, this is a very, very long process in, in a lot of cases. Um, but also, because we're bringing in all of these different data sources, we need to be careful in terms of validation. So what we do is we go and we check a lot of these links, and we make sure that each subsidiary that we're listing within our database is of sufficient quality to be included. Um, and then because of this, what we do then is we limit our database to 500 multinationals in total. But all of the principles and companies, we start with the universe, um, but we only make this 500 available. So for example, if you came to me and said, I'm interested in this company, this is something that our platform would allow you to do. OK. Then maybe I can talk a little bit about the outputs of what we get. So firstly, there's a physical register with all of the affiliate names. So what we do is we make available details for over 500 large multinational companies. We have identifiers such as the name of the company, um, their business registry number. So, for example, linked to um, Open Corporates, which is a fabulous kind of uh, tool which kind of combines all of these business registers together. We also provide the LEI where it's available and the PERM ID as well from Refinitiv. Um, we gather address information where we can find it and alternative information, alternative names 
um, which this company has been referred to as well. Um, and then if we can find hierarchical information, so for example, the structure within the firm will then compile that together to make that available as part of our physical register. So that's freely downloadable and available for anyone to take. Add to that, we also provide a digital register. So this provides us with around 50,000 websites for our 500 m um, and from this, you'll have a so website that's being operated. Um, uh, or FR, then obviously that can be assigned to France because it's a French jurisdiction. And then we try and get measures of the importance of a website. So the page rank um, of so how important that website is with measures um, through a project called Tranco as well, which gives us information on that. And then new for this uh, release is creating a news monitor. So what we've done is we've used a, a large uh, global news database uh, uh, called G Delta, and then we have matched that find that through time um, and see when there's when there's spikes so in this example this is basically the daily news articles for a company called amgen and what happened is there was a big spike um, around december 2022 and this was the announcement of basically a takeover of a company called horizon therapeutics um, I've only provided 2022 so supplementary news strikes as um, spikes as well when um, essentially so the FTC have kind of blocked the progress of it and then they've eventually approved it and things like this. So you can kind of track the progress of that deal um, through time using this tool. Um, and the hopes is, is that maybe where we'll take this tool in the future is by using advanced tools such as natural language processing and things like this, we could look to try and classify some of these articles and extract that information out where maybe investment within the jurisdiction exists or an MA activity or the laying off of staff or things like this and this gives alternative indicators of maybe what's going on with these companies. So the next steps for us, so obviously this is our second release but um, I think the, the great thing of both OECD and UNSD together means that we can kind of have a view for the future and what that might mean. Um, so the first thing for us is to reduce the resource burden. Um, there's a huge amount of work that goes on behind the scenes to make this, this data available. Um, but if we were able to invest a little bit in working out how to automatically extract tables from PDF documents and do some of that processing that would help to remove a lot of the burden and maybe allow us to increase the scope of our coverage um, and then also the validation process that often takes a time because it's just kind of essentially asking is company X a subsidiary of company Y and then it would give a bit of text back which would maybe give us a kind of an automated um, sort of first line of, of kind of attack to some of these uh, issues where we've got incorrect company linkages. And then going into the future we'd like to include more financial variables so at the moment we've we've kind of focused on corporate structures um, but we would like to be able to involve, include things such as employment, investment, uh, and profit variables. Escape, so moving from beyond the 500 uh, to maybe a larger site sample. A lot of our data sources are 100% real time. So what we'd like to do is maybe we can move this to a real time register. At the moment. Um, what we're doing is we're releasing a sample at, compiled as of the 31st of December 2022, but the majority of the sources we have are quite recent, so we could compile it near closer to real time and become that kind of, you know, sort of 
open source real time information system, um, which would help people along the way. Um, as I said before, improve the news monitor to try and classify some of these events. Um, there's also a big initiative on the UN side um, to try and create unique identifiers for businesses. Um, and if it was possible to create a link with this initiative too, then that would really help to build things further. Um, and then the final and kind of ultimate goal is to kind of provide a framework for others to be able to profile their own companies. Um, so if, if all of these tools were based on the UN global platform, then uh, users would be able to come in, add their own companies of choice, and then profile them and create their own corporate structures using the tools that were developed. So finally, just for uh, uh, if you'd like more information, you can go to the, the website. So there's the bit.ly link there that you can follow. Um, that will allow you to download the, the data um, and also use our dashboard as well, which lets you kind of easily explore the information. Um, and with 10 million news, news articles to go through, <laughs> sometimes it's a lot easier to have a dashboard. Um, there's also a full methodology paper as well. I can't do justice to all of the work behind the scenes in, in sort of, you know, 20 minutes or so. Um, so there's a lot more information there if you'd like to investigate. And then um, contact emails for both OECD and UNSD if you'd like to ask any questions. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you, Graham. Uh, <clears throat> of course, congratulations to you and of course the team in both your OECD and UNSD. Um, so now it's time for uh, discussions. Uh, so I noticed there is one question regarding to the methods of linking. Uh, and this is maybe for Christina and Geraldo. Uh, if you have looked at the technology uh, privacy enhancing technique, right, to enable the linkage. Uh, without sharing confidential microdata. Yes, I can start by saying a few words on that and then Gerardo can complement if he wants. Well, in fact, there will be some hints and some recommendations on the on the handbook regarding the organizational issues and the cooperation between different institutions, because we know that uh, uh, in some countries to use uh, um, business statistics and trade statistics, the, the databases came from different institutions and these different institutions, they don't usually work together. So we know that there will be some issues on exchanging microdata between these different organizations. So there will be, as I mentioned, some hints and some recommendations on the, on the handbook because this was indeed a topic that we decided to include because it is indeed very relevant at this point for the microdata linking. So yes, in fact, there will be some some topics on that included in the in the handbook. I don't know, Gerardo, if you want to complement. Many thanks, uh, Christina. Thank you, Alexander, for the uh, this interesting question. Yes, as Christina pointed out, we are now considering uh, several dimensions on confidentiality, and particularly in the side of the process to uh, elaborate in this case statistics based on linking business and trade. We are considering the need of the cooperation between the organization. However, uh, we have now, as uh, Christina pointed out uh, during her intervention, a pending discussion with our uh, chief editors in charge of the International Merchant Trade Statistics. Also, uh, we will continue this discussion with the responsibles of the uh, Trading Services Manual uh, in order to be consistent about the uh, manage about the confidentiality and including the same approach in three in three documents no the manuals on trade uh, business uh, and, and and also this linkage with trade is, is an uh, relevant aspect and uh, in fact when when we started the discussion about this confidentiality we started in the case of the decentralized systems of statistics for example the case of our colleagues in the united states uh, put the, the issue on the table in order to review what about this need to share data. So for that is an interesting point and thank you very much Alexander for the for the question. Thank you. Uh, uh, so there is uh, another question that may uh, related to the also the uh, confidentiality of the company microdata. So 
this is related with the law, right? Or, uh, whether this is uh, compliance with the laws of the different countries and protections of the personal data. So maybe you would like to say something about this? Yes, I can start by, by saying a few words on that. Yes, indeed, it, it, it depends on the law on the various countries, but um, by doing the microdata linking, what we expect on the output, it's not a confidential uh, record uh, still because there will be some linkage methods and the final output, we expect that it's not to be a confidential record. So the, the confidentiality is more related with access to the data, to the primary data, because in the final, the output will be uh, um, a record that can be uh, easily disseminated because in principle, there will be no uh, confidentiality. But, but in fact, as uh, Gerardo mentioned, we uh, want to tackle the confidentiality in uh, the several phases of the process in having access to the data in the doing the microdata linking and also in the dissemination part because um, this should be tackled in the different steps of the microdata linking process indeed. Rado, I don't know if you want to add something. Yes, thank you very much, Christine, and thank you, Marky, and special thanks for raising this question. Definitely, this is a, one of the aspects that we would like to discuss with our responsibles of the trade manuals, because in this approach, we are considering one side of the same coin, the process for uh, sharing the data and doing possible this linkage between business and trade statistics. This is one side. And the other, of course, taking, uh, taking into account the confidentiality restrictions according to the law, is the dissemination for putting to the users this information. So according to the first side of the coin, this process is necessary, data sharing, of course, some aspects that are necessary to solve between the organizations. And with this, this is uh, important taking into account these two dimensions, the process for doing possible the linkage, and the other side is, of course, the dissemination. Thank you again. Thank you. So Graham, there is a question uh, to you, uh, but I think this is mostly about the request. Uh, I think it's about uh, updating the period of the data. Yes, so um, the update period um, essentially, so the release now is for the 31st of December 2022, and the previous release that was available was for the 31st of December 2021. So I think the aim would be going forward is that the next release will be around the same time next year would be for the 21st of December 2023 um, made available then. So at the moment, we're roughly on a yearly update cycle. Yeah, so yeah, so this is we're still talking about this confidentiality, <laughs> Christina, Geraldo. Uh, so yes. It, it is could be complex, right? To to have a different uh, breakdown, different variables. Uh, but maybe you can say something about this. Do you mind to start, Gerardo? Because I'm not seeing this question on the chat. I'm looking for it. If you want to start. Oh yeah, so I, I can read it out. So the requirement or request for different output also makes confidentiality difficult. For example. The Eurostat data set for tech and then the UN request for the data. So com to combine the two uh, guaranteed confidentiality, uh, uh, to, to combining the two and ga still guaranteeing the confidentiality will be complex. Yeah, I, I would like to start uh, regarding this. Definitely, when we are combining information from two data, two data sets, we are talking in this uh, opportunity about business and trade. So we are aware, definitely, about the restrictions. In fact, I would like to mention the case of Mexico. We have now our, uh, our uh, national law and statistical and geographic information system. And with this law, we have some uh, uh, criteria to define the data sharing with a, a, a government agencies, especially for producing the statistics that the country needs. So this is the main umbrella. But particularly in the case of specific variables, we need to uh, establish memorandums of cooperation. So for that, there are several levels to talk about the specificities, about the variables, about the needs, what kind of information we are producing. So for that, it's necessary uh, discussing about confidentiality in several levels, the umbrella of the law and the particularities based on the variables that we have in one set, that is the business statistics and the other, the trade statistics. 
I stop here, Christina, please go ahead. Thank you. No, just to add that uh, that's why we are also defining some uh, uh, Q uh, and key 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 indicators because in in fact there are some um, reference data and some many most important data on the trade on uh, on the linking business and trade statistics uh, because in fact there are some so many requests so we are also trying to identify the core information that uh, the countries must have in order to do this microdata linking and so i think this could also help in the clarification and in the confidentiality issues thank you mark yes uh, thank you christina heraldo so graham there's a question for you from alex about the okay, estimated share of the top 500. Okay. Thanks, Alex. Um, I think interesting question. We haven't necessarily got a share, but uh, we do try and ground it. So, for example, for the top 500 uh, M&Es in revenue terms, that works out at around 20 trillion. Uh, US dollars, which is roughly the GDP. So that kind of hopefully gives you a benchmark of, of how large this subset is. Um, I think I remember a paper from, uh, I think back in 2005, where maybe the, the number for the 500 was quoted as, as something around sort of maybe the 10 to 15 percent mark, but um, I wouldn't want to be 100 percent quoted on that number. <laughs> OK. Yeah, I, I think this is something uh, uh, the, the, the register of the MNEs is very, uh, very useful for many countries also, just because, you know, they may not have capabilities to compile them. So there's another question from Turksat, uh, Christina Heraldo. So I will read it out. Since we have the enterprise sys equal the legal unit as the statistical unit, it would be great to have both goods and services together in data sets. So what do you think about this uh, total trade by enterprise, like TOTEC? Thank you, Mark, and thank you for this excellent question. In fact, we have a specific section in Chapter 8 of the handbook, which is how we can relate uh, tech and s -tech, uh, statistics and uh, uh, linking trade in goods and trade in services and what are the main uh, uh, points and the, the future the future remarks on, on this kind of linkage so this is something that we are trying to include also in the in the handbook so probably because this section on the handbook is still in progress uh, we can uh, touch our colleague from the Turkstat to help us to to draft this uh, <laughs> this part of the handbook so it will be very good to hear some new ideas and thoughts on that what do you think Gerardo? No, definitely you are cordially invited uh, no, to, to uh, provide input on, on this uh, idea. When we started the elaboration of the handbook, in fact, the elaboration of the uh, international merchandise trade statistics and trading services, we started with the discussion of linking business and trade for both goods and services. So in, in this case, definitely is an interesting point because we have now the consideration of the uh, chapter six and chapter eight about the comparability, in fact, about the comparability between merchant trade and trading services. But these challenging aspects that you are mentioned about the tot, uh, total trade, tot tech, no, as you as you pointed out, is definitely challenging, but uh, is part of the ongoing discussion that we have. And you are, of course, cordially invited to be part of this of this group in charge of the hand. Thank you for raising that. <laughs> Thank you. So maybe just uh, for information for the others. So in the BPM seven, so they will be also recommending a compilation of the uh, 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 investment and trade by enterprises, right? So even though as a complementary tables. So this will be also uh, can be a springboard, right, to go toward their directions. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so we are one minute out. So I would like to thank you to our presenters, right, uh, Stefano, uh, Christina, Heraldo, and Graham. And thank you also for uh, very active contributions. So I will uh, share the presentations and also the recordings. Uh, hopefully it could be uploaded to the event page, uh, but nevertheless, if it's not possible, I think I have your all, all of your emails and then I will just uh, send you a broadcast later on. Thank you again and have a enjoyable rest of the day. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.